Have you ever wished you had your very own quilt shop? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Well, let's at least make a quilt shop embroidery block for our quilt. Hey, Kimberbell friends, Kristen Song here. And today we are gonna make a quilt shop block for our candy corn quilt shop quilt. Got all that? <laughs> All right, so this one I would save probably an hour. I'm just guessing. This one's a big one, uh, lots of steps, um, but it is going to be really cute. If you made the Boulevard bench pillow last year or this year, um, that one, it has the same block in it. And it took a lot of time, but it is so cute. And one thing that I noticed that is different on this year's block is that um, the signs are made out of leather instead of felt, which I think is great. I, I like the idea of leather better than felt. Um, it looks more crisp, more clean to me. I think that it'll be nice with this block. So for today, what we're gonna need is our background fabric. And the background fabric for this is the white with orange dots and backed with fusible stabilizer to ward off puckers. And the size of this is gonna be 10 and a half by 12 and a quarter. 10 and a half by 12 and a quarter. So um, make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer. You're gonna to wanna to use your um, tape or basting stitch on this since it's such a large block. And that's our main fabric. And then we have lots of applique pieces for this one. So if I can grab them all here. All right, the first one is for the roof and make sure and notice that this is directional fabric when you're cutting it. So this one you're gonna want to be eight by three and a half and as always back it with fusible stabilizer for your applique pieces. Um, eight by three and a half for the roof, the black and white squiggly wavy lines. And then for the windows, this one is the yellow lattice and we're gonna cut this one to four and a half by six, backed with fusible stabilizer. This is for the windows, like the light coming in through the windows, the yellow lattice. And then for the actual house, it's that pretty blue, uh, purple. Um, this is the one that was from Make Yourself at Home, that quilt. I still haven't finished that quilt. <laughs> I need to get back to that. We'll have to... I don't know, get that one done somehow. But anyway, so the purple, it's got the little flowers on it. And for the house, we want this one to be seven by five and a half and backed with feasible stabilizer, seven by five and a half. And then for the door, it's the black with little white dots. And that one we're gonna cut to two and a half by three and a half, backed with feasible stabilizer and the black with white dots for the door. And then we go to the items in our embellishment kit. Make sure to get your embellishment kit from Oma Darlings. I assume you've already got it, but if not, you're gonna need it for this block. So for the, the uh, dormers, um, so did you know that there's dormers and what's the other um, gable? So actually these are gables. That's funny. Um, the way that I understood it is the gables are the pointy ones and dormers are the rounded. And our new house has the rounded dormer and my husband and I both prefer angles and so we prefer dormers. So it's funny that this is called a dormer. I just noticed that. Anyway, <laughs> back to what we're doing. So for the dormer, you're gonna want your black glitter. And when you use your black glitter, make sure to take off the backing and, and we'll talk about that as we um, work on it, but it's actually the topping. So you can see there's this clear um, plastic sticky on the top of it. And you wanna make sure and take that off before you put down your black glitter applique piece. So for the dormers, black glitter, it's five by three and a half for your cut size, five by three and a half. I don't remember if it already came this way or if I cut it, but five by three and a half. And then we're going to need the white leather for the sign. And like I said, I think that's better than using felt. Um, I like felt, but it 
it just looks crisper to me if you use leather. So um, Kimberbell has the, these really nice leathers. So I think it's great that we're using it for this. So white leather for the sign, it's going to be four and a half by two for your white leather. And you don't want to back these with anything. They come ready to go. And then for the uh, candy corn flowers, we're going to use the iridescent mylar. So you'll find this in your embellishment kit. It's um, just this thin little mylar. And for that, we're going to want this to be six by two, six by two for the iridescent mylar. It'll make our candy corn flowers sparkle. It's very pretty. I made um, my granddaughter a uh, fairy for she had a fairy birthday party and I made a fairy applique shirt for her and I put mylar under the wings on the fairy and oh my gosh it was so pretty I made myself one too <laughs> so mylar is really fun to stitch with don't worry it's not hard to do at all using mylar it at least for me it worked really fine so don't worry about the mylar um, and then the last piece that we're going to need is the uh, clear white um, vinyl. So this one, it's called Sweet as Candy Clear Vinyl. And we're going to use a, a piece that is four and a half by six. Four and a half by six of the clear vinyl. I don't, oh, probably over the windows would make, make sense. That will be used over the windows. All right, and then those are all of the applique pieces, all of the fabrics that we need. As always, we're gonna need some batting. So since our final cut size of this project is, sorry, eight and a half by 10 and a half, that means that we want a piece of batting that is nine by 11, nine by 11 batting. All right, and then we're gonna use, um, lots of colors from our thread kit if you haven't already make sure to order the candy corn quilt shop thread kit from oma darlings they have them in stock and ready to go i just got mine a couple days ago i'm pretty excited about it so um, it makes life so much easier to not have to figure out which threads work with um, which fabrics and it makes it easy to carry around and move you don't have to have lots of threads on your desk waiting for you to to stitch so on this one we are going to quilt it and since our final cut size is eight and a half by ten and a half that means we want a quilting design that is eight by ten so the Kimberbell guide is using Halloween 2 which is really a perfect one for this block so I pulled it up in embroidery software to take a look and see what it what it looked like and it's got um, ghosts and witch hats and um, the candy corn flowers and you can see them all even though this is a large block the quilt shop is a large block and takes up a lot of room on the fabric you can still see all of those cute designs around it and so it's really perfect and if you did boulevard with me last year we had to move the house down, the quilt shop down to the bottom. And there's nothing on here saying that we need to do that on this one. And there's plenty of quilting up at the top. So as soon as it just make sure it's centered with the fabric, just like, um, and we'll go over that while we're doing it. But um, when you bring a design in, like you could do it on embroidery software or on your machine, but I'm just going to do it on my, my machine since we don't have to move it at all. But you will do your quilting design first on your main fabric and then it'll already be centered in your hoop and the design will come um, when you load the, the quilt shop design that will automatically go to the center too. And so it works out perfectly so you don't have to do any of that that we had to do last year. Um, I thought there was something else I wanted to tell you. Um, oh, I do. So like I said, eight by 10 quilting, we're using Halloween two. And for those that are using a five by seven hoop, I will add a little diagram so that you can visualize what you're gonna do. But basically you're gonna do four hoopings to figure it out to get eight by 10, it's pretty easy. You're gonna do a four by six up at the top, another four by six next to it, and then down below a four by four and another four by four. So across that will add up to eight, the four by six, four by six, that equals up to eight, and then four by six down and four by four will equal up to 10. So that you'll do all of those like how we did on the fabric shelves, how I gave you that tutorial on the fabric shelves so you're going to do that same thing and you're going to do four hoopings 
Now, those that have an eight by 12 hoop, I need to let you know that the eight by 10 quilting design will not fit in your eight by 12 hoop. I discussed that on the um, five by seven tutorial using embroidery software. So you could see what I was talking about. That quarter inch all around the sides makes it a half inch larger. So the quilting design, while it's called an eight by 10, it actually is eight and a half by 10 and a half. So all you do, and I showed you on the last tutorial for the fabric shelves, hopefully you got to see that one. All you will do if you have an eight by 12 hoop is you would take out steps three and four. If you have a machine that lets you just bypass it, then you can just bypass the, all it is is number three and number four of the quilting design is the placement stitch and the basting stitch for the quilting design. Uh, I'm sorry, for the main fabric. So you would just take those out. Those are the only two parts. The quilting design fits in eight by 10, the placement and the tack down of the batting fits in eight by 10. It's just three and four, the ones for the main fabric. So if you take those out using embroidery software, you would instead just feel around your batting like I showed on the tutorial and make sure that your main fabric is straight and, and centered well over the batting and then tape it down in place. So the basting stitch is a nice to have, but it's not required and you will need to bypass it to if your biggest hoop is eight by 12. I will probably use my nine by 14 hoop because I'm pretty excited. I've got my dream machine too. Um, but if you have a smaller hoop there, you can do this easily. Like I said, five by seven, you'll do four hoopings. Eight by 12, you would just take out the, the uh, number three and number four quilting steps. So, and if you have a six by 10 as your largest, same thing, do those four um, steps that we're showing you for the five by seven folks, that'll work fine. Um, you could actually even do a little bit bigger. You could probably do like sixes. We'll, we'll figure that out too for you. <laughs> but anyway, so um, the quilt shop and I think that's it. Let's go ahead and get started. And just real quick for those that are using a five by seven hoop, there's a separate design on the CD that has the quilt shop broken up into two parts. I'm sure you've already seen that, but just in case for the five by seven people, for eight by 12 largers, you will do the eight by 12 design.